All right, I'm using a uh, back roll method here where I roll out one of the reds, stitch it down, roll out the next red, stitch it down, work my way across the brown here. The brown is the top or bottom, doesn't really matter. And the green was the other side, and the red's the uh, back. So right now I'm measuring out my six inches of my brown. And I pin up the red to it and stitch it down. That's the funnest thing in the world to do, but the only way I know how to do it. Could be using uh, something other than a marker, but I'm not. Uh, I have to be careful because I didn't notice at first, but my marks are going right through the material onto the material below it which is giving me all kinds of false marks, so I have to be careful where I'm marking at. So I'm kind of trying to lift it up and mark it. See, there's a mark right there. That was from the last time. There's a mark right there. So I'm just going to be a little cautious as to how I mark it. But I really need a piece of paper to shove underneath there while I'm marking it. Go. That way the marker doesn't see through and I can see that I'm on piece of paper. That's better. Should have thought of that last time. And everything's so slippery that it's sliding off the table no matter what I do. Alright, well I'll get back to this when I start stitching. See you guys in a minute. All right, here's what we have so far. It's a green on the one side and brown on the other side. We uh, finished putting together all of our baffles. Those were the red inside. And I'm a little worried the baffles may be too large. But we'll fill them and see what we get. You can see they're kind of wide baffles. I bet you they're six, seven, eight inches in between the baffles once you fill it up. So we'll see. And on the ends, <coughs> what I did was I rolled the green and brown once and stitched a straight line down, and then rolled it a second time and stitched another straight line down to give it a finished edge. And that's all I did on the ends. Uh, you can kind of see I just rolled it once and then twice. Nothing really came out even at the ends, but currently it's seven feet four inches long which is way too long so I need to trim it up on both ends seal up one of the ends and then start putting down in it I'm hoping I have enough down I didn't think my uh, pockets were going to be quite so big but you can see I mean, that's just one pocket and they're all about that size so maybe only four inches wide or so, six inches wide, I guess what we made them. But they're six inches wide, and that's eight inches tall. So this is made for a winter quilt, but that's going to be a lot of down. I don't even know if I'll have that. Did the same thing with the stitching on the end. Just rolled it twice, and then I ran a piece of uh, gross skin all the way down the end here. What we'll use that far is I'll run a piece of uh, elastic cord through the inside of this all the way through. I haven't figured out how I'm going to finish it out yet. I may roll this under and give myself a little bit of a meaty area to pull on. And I rolled the corners on the ends because on my other one, my corners kept fraying loose. So I rolled the corners in and stitched them down on both ends. And what I'll do is I'll leave this like this and stitch it all together and let the shock cord come out here so it's pulling on this part here. And actually I'll probably do something off of this end too. Uh, I, my goal is to put like a couple little, uh, every so often put a little loop or something that we can attach to the hammock with some kind of hook or something down this edge here. Just a little bitty, little small loop, probably not even uh, made of this stuff, probably just made of some kind of uh, nylon string or something that I can hook a clamp on, a clasp, clasp on to tie it into the hammock. It's a little on the wide side, I will say that. Um, 
to be honest, I don't know how many feet across it is, but I'd say it's about four and a half. I also picked up some material for a tarp that I'm going to build, which I will probably start as soon as I'm done with this project. Uh, and then I'll get back into doing that uh, stove project. I did finish the foam, hot foam, hot wire foam melter, not melter, cutter. And I will be getting back into that as soon as I finish this project. This one's taking precedent because we are going camping in a couple weeks here. And I need the quilt for that. So that's why it's taking precedence right now. Alright, we'll catch you guys later when I start filling it with down. Alright, so I have these all ready to go for filling. And I've got it somewhat tied up to something here. It's hitting the ground by like three feet. I mean, it's just dragging on the ground down here. Which, my basement floor is not the cleanest in the world, so that's not filling me anything. I need to vacuum it up better. So I'm going to start filling it down. And my plan was just to put it in. But i got to see if I can get the down from the comforters. So recycled down is kind of my specialty. Believe me, I can find a lot of it. That's a bag of... A recycled down comforter. Bag one. That's a bag of about ten jackets. Or is it a comforter? That's another comforter, I'm sorry. Press down. That's another comforter. And about five jackets. <coughs> That's another comforter. And I don't think there's any jackets in this one. It's all one comforter. So these are some big comforters. They're all full of down. So I'm just going to cut a scissor through this, stuff it in, and hope for the best. doesn't work, I'll stop. I'll get out the vacuum, the mini vacuum, and start vacuuming it out of here, and going at it that method. I'm not even sure what kind of feathers we have in these, but this is some thick feathers. And this is really clean stuff. I can't it even smell like somebody washed it before they took it down there, so I won't take it if it smells nasty. But... Nonetheless, there's a lot of down here. I probably can get one of these comforters. will probably be enough to do this whole thing. So I got a lot of recycled down. Well, let me get a pair of scissors and try and get started here. And because I don't like to have down in my, down in my lungs, I'm going to put this thing on as well. Just to keep some of the down out of my lungs. We'll see how that goes over. I have never done it this way before. Wish me luck. I have a basement full of down in a few minutes here. Hmm. Too late to stop now. This could have been a bad idea. This may be a really bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see this working very well. Woo, man. That's going to fall over. Okay, first off, we're going to lose this jacket. And that's just going to collect it down. We're going to roll up our sleeves and just dig in here. Lots of extra down, so not a big deal. I need to find a piece of tape for my nose because this thing keeps sliding around on me. Alright, if I look stupid, you can laugh at me. Or laugh with me? I don't know. I'm probably going to be laughing just as much as the next guy. Okay, so... <coughs> I ran the vacuum because it was getting a little out of hand there. I really don't have but one little bump right here so far. So I'm going to have the vacuum handy. As I cut a slot open, I'll get a handful out as much as I can. And then I'll let the vacuum take the rest of it. Because once you get the big bulk of it out, 
and shove it in, the rest of it's loose. Let the vacuum do that, and then I'll pull it out of the vacuum, because it pushes it all together in the vacuum, and then I'll pack it down in there that way. We'll see how that goes. It'll make it a little better. So, we recording? We sure are. Let's cut my next slot open. That doesn't go anywhere. That's a handful. My hand is compressed. And I gotta gently let that down. When I open this up, reach my hand down inside there, and then release and shake. Okay. So, this one's full, this one's full, this one's full, this one's full, and this one's full. One, two, three, four, five or four. I'm working on number six. I'm not quite full. I've just got it started. Okay. Got to work it around the bend down there. So, once I get around this bend down, bottom down here, I'll consider that full, which leaves one, two, three over here. Wait, one, two, three. Over here. One, two, and a half over here. Two and a half on one side, three on the other side. I'm down. I'm still in the same first quilt, and I'm down to the last set of pockets. One, two, three, four, five, six pockets left. Once I finish these six pockets, that first quilt is done. Um, I probably have a half a pocket on the floor down here. It's blowing around. Probably not. It looks like a lot more than it is without free like this. So I'm gonna finish this quilt out, and then I'm trying to decide if I'll have enough to open a whole other quilt up. Or if I should try and do some of the jackets that I have. Um, lots of down all, outside the thing. But once I get done with this, I'll be able to vacuum. <coughs> I'll just roll this up and seal it and just vacuum the whole thing off. But that's it. It's all full. Took me a couple hours this time. Um, but last time I didn't take all the down out and put it directly in here. I took it out, put it in a bag, and I had two big bags to work from. This time I was taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, and it took a little bit longer. So, two or three hours to recycle the down directly from the quilt into here. Into this quilt. From a quilt to a quilt. What a waste, right? Anyways, done, and time to move on to the next step. My back stitch. And I caught the foot there a little bit, so I'll put this on. Get out my shredding scissors. Bet nobody had a pair of those suckers. Cut eight things at once. That seals it up a little bit so nothing can escape. That makes me a little more comfortable carrying anything upstairs like that was a nightmare. So there we have it. I will vacuum it up a little bit and clean it up and lay it out and let you guys see what it looks like like this. Alright. So it's completed. Well, there's a lot of trim work to do in sizing. But I am five foot six. Six foot six foot two, six foot three. Something like that. 
and this way. Maybe four foot, I don't know. Just to give you a rough idea. And height wise, let's go ahead and take the camera off and lay down next to it here. See how tall the thing is. So height wise, and it's kind of fucked up this end a little bit. Can I lay it on it? Height wise, we're looking at, oh, who knows? I don't have anything to measure it with. My teeny hand. Uh, four or five. It isn't quite six. I thought it might be six. I'm kind of happy because I was afraid six would be too much. So, yeah, easy. Five, maybe, maybe six. Some points. But, that's it. It's done except for the, um, running the, uh, Gross gain along the other end down there. Um, putting some clips on the end down here to hang it off the hammock. I did not put near as much in these last outside pockets, but the inner pockets are all pushing outwards. So there's very little down in this last pocket, but because those baffles were free moving, they're kind of pushing out on both sides. So you can see they kind of just collapse down, which is what I want. I want to have some room to grab and hang from that. I don't want too much down in there. But who knows? I haven't weighed it yet. Don't know how much it weighs. It's not light, and I haven't tried to compress it down yet and shove it in the bag. Those will be my next steps. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, I've motivated somebody to get out there and do the same. Uh, it's a lot of work, but a lot of fun as well. Um, I wouldn't try and do it by hand. Somebody asked me if they'd do it by hand. No way. Not me. All right. I've got to run. Catch you guys later.